system architecture is part of this mix. Um, we, uh, I mean, we've looked at business architecture, we've looked at security frameworks. Um, uh, so, system architecture is part and parcel of it, and we'll look at uh, some more of the, the details of system architecture and, and what we have to look at. But the system architecture itself, even at the highest level of abstraction, um, does have implications for security. Uh, and as an example, I will give you the Harvard architecture. Now, uh, it is unlikely that you are ever going to run into the Harvard architecture. Um, these days, everybody uses von Neumann architecture. Von Neumann architecture uh, specifically states that there is no difference between uh, data and executable code. Um, uh, executable code is just data that you run and uh, you can edit programs, you can uh, create and modify and enter uh, programs in the same memory space and in the same memory format as the, uh, the executable material. So, um, it, you know, that makes it easy to create, modify, compile, uh, and link programs. It uh, means that the operating system itself is entered in the same space as uh, application programming and even data. So um, we are you know, in uh, sort of a wide open space. Um, it's uh, it's very convenient, and of course, convenience always comes at the price of security. Uh, there, uh, convenience always introduces an extra element of risk, uh, and in in this particular case, uh, uh, well. Uh, Harvard architecture. Now, you, I, I very much doubt that you were ever going to run into Harvard architecture. Uh, Harvard architecture uh, is, uh, well, uh, the example that you might know about historically is the, the Mark I and Mark II, so forth, uh, computers that uh, Howard Aiken and IBM uh, put together for uh, the U.S. Navy. Uh, I believe uh, it's possible that Lyons Electronic Office also used uh, at least a, a form, a version of uh, Harvard architecture. In any case, uh, Harvard architecture uh, did not have the same address space or even the same address format memory format for uh, the executable code, the programs, and the data. They were completely separate addressing spaces. You had an actual physical separation of the data store and the program store. And the internal representation, the, the structure of the two stores was different. So you, uh, you could not uh, have, you know, work on programs, you know, run compile. Well, I mean, they didn't have compilers in those days. They didn't have programming languages. You were all using machine language. And the, uh, the, that meant that when you had, uh, well, you couldn't have viruses. It would have been completely impossible because there was no way for the program to modify the program store. The program would have been operating on the data store. And so there, 
you know, there, there was no way for somebody to uh, uh, load uh, something into the data store, which then would affect the, uh, the program store because you didn't execute anything that happened in the data store. There was no executable uh, code. There was no executable operations going on in the data store. So there was no, uh, you know, again, there was this physical, not just a physical separation, but an actual difference in the internal structure of the program store and the data store. So, uh, no, you couldn't run compilers. You couldn't uh, modify programs on the fly. Well, yes, you could, but you had to do it from the switchboard. Um, you, uh, you know, so th there was no way to enter uh, a virus for a, a virus to infect uh, the programming of the machine from the data store. Um, it, it was, you know, simply flat out impossible. Inherently, <laughs> it, it couldn't happen. Uh, the, uh, yeah. You, you would have to convince the operator to make a whole bunch of changes to the program manually. Uh, and that might take a little bit of doing. Uh, there would be an awful lot of social engineering involved in, in getting that to work. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, it, they were safe from computer viruses. The only reason we have computer viruses is because everybody uses von Neumann architecture these days. So, you know, there is an inherent security weakness in the choice of architecture. Now, again, uh, you know, uh, everybody is, is doing, using von Neumann architecture these days. And, uh, well, you know, the, the productivity gains from the convenience, uh, you know, maybe that is the right choice. But it is uh, inherent in the choice of the architecture at that very, very fundamental level. So uh, we have uh, factors in our choice of uh, the actual system architecture at the most basic level that that make a difference in terms of security and what we have to do in regard to security and securing those systems.